Hi everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Acadia Gurney, and today we're gonna to be talking all about virtual escape rooms. So let's go ahead and get started. So first we're gonna just open up our Gmail, and from our Gmail, we're gonna go ahead and go to our drive. From our drive, we're gonna just create a brand new Google Slides. And once we have our slides open, we can go ahead and get rid of these text box because we don't need them. And we actually don't need to change the page um, size of this slide right now, just because this would be presented either on a computer or um, a phone or anything like that. And so we don't really, um, we're not gonna be printing it off, so we don't really care about what size it is. So we can just leave it like this. From there, what we can do is, I'm gonna actually open up the document that I already have started. And from here, we just have that blank screen. So we're gonna go to our background and then we're gonna choose an image. Um, so from here, you can upload um, a picture. So what I want my background to be is a classroom. So if I already have a PNG of a, of a classroom, I can just drag and drop it right here. But Google also allows you to um, upload something from your Google Drive or just do a Google image search. So here I wanna write classroom background. And here's just a ton of different backgrounds that you can use. I like this one, so I'm gonna just click on that and then press insert. What this will do is make the classroom your background. So now no one can move it around. But now I already have um, set up the situation that I want my virtual um, escape room to be. So, oh no, you're trapped in the classroom. Move your mouse around the classroom to find clues. Once you answer each clue correctly, you will correct, collect words to a mystery phrase. So let me just kind of explain to you all of the different components that I have for my um, escape room. And then from there, we'll actually start creating it. So first I have my um, digital notebook, my um, interactive digital notebook. And here on just one of the pages, um, I went to the number system graphic organizer that I created. And in here I said, which two are correct? So then there's just problems. So I equals negative four is an integer. Um, pi is a counting number. One is a counting number, whole number, integer, rational number, and real number. A equals three is a whole number. Um, so from there, students can figure out which answer is correct. Um, and so from there, um, I really wanted I to be the correct answer. I would probably go a little more in depth with negative four is an integer, rational number, and real number. Um, so I'm gonna just write that in real quick. Okay, so then that shows that, okay, negative one is, or sorry, I is correct. F pi is a counting number, that's not correct. So F is not a correct answer. S one is a counting number, whole number, integer, rational number, and real number, that is correct. And then um, negative three, or sorry, three is only a whole number. That's not correct. It's also an integer, a rational number, and a real number, and a counting number. Um, so then they would know that I and S are correct. So somewhere in my instructions, I would probably write down, um, write down the correct answers or something like that. So I would have students remember the letters I and S, and I could tell them, you know, this is going to be a word. Um, so is is the word uh, for this um, problem. So the second one is I have the, um, an adding and subtracting integer maze. And so their students would start at the start line and then they would solve the actual maze. And once they get to the end, um, it says way to go. But then it also has an arrow pointing to the word math. So math is their second word or actually their word to the maze problem. The last thing I have is just task cards that I made digital. So all of these things that I've incorporated are things I have videos on. So I have a video on how to create your own digital interactive notebook, how to create your own maze, and how to make your task cards digital. So that's the really cool thing about this is if you've been following along with me or creating these templates, it'll be really easy to edit each of them and then incorporate them into a virtual escape room. So from here, I just changed a couple of the questions around. So um, this task card I would really edit um, because there's it's um, multiple components to it. But right now I just want the students to answer that first question is negative 0 0.75 a rational number? F equals yes, L equals no. Um, is negative two rational or irrational? U is rational, A is irrational. And what is the absolute value of negative two? Um, S is negative two and equals two. So if students were um, solving this along and they got all of them correct, they would find that the first answer is F. 
Second answer is U. Third answer is N. So then that's F U N. So that's fun. So now we have um, from our digital notebook, we have is. From our maze, we have math. And then this one, we have fun. The last thing I would have is a Google form where it says type your answer to the maze, page five on your digital interactive notebook, and your task card answer in the space below. So then their answer is math is fun. So once they get to this part, they've completed the escape room. So now that I have all of these components ready to go, let's go back to our virtual escape room and actually put things in. So the way that I've found it to work best is if you um, can link them in the actual classroom. So this virtual classroom that we have. So I'm gonna just copy this so I don't forget what I need to type in. Down here, you have a little explore button in Google Slides. You can go ahead and click that and then type in PNG background transparent and then go over to images. And right here is just a transparent image. So if we drag it over here, we can size it differently. So right now it's really large. So I'm gonna just make it smaller. And once it finished loading, now it's just a, a transparent background. So I'm gonna make it pretty small because again, remember my instructions were have students move their mouse around. Um, so I want it to be kind of small so students actually kind of have to explore the classroom. So let's just say we want to put it on the door right there. Okay, great. But right now it's having us having it linked to some um, Wikipedia um, link. We don't want that. Let's go ahead and edit the link. And let's do this to our digital interactive notebook. So I'm going to share. Um, so this one, so this is already kind of done for them. So you can just copy the link. Again, if you want students to open up their own version of this, you could paste it in. And then remember after the uh, forward slash edit, get rid of that and just say copy. I don't necessarily need to do that right now because students would just be looking at it. So I um, wouldn't need to do that necessarily. So I'm gonna go back to my escape room and this is actually gonna be my link. So look, then you can see that it will take me to my digital interactive notebook and then students would solve it and then get to page five where they actually do the component for the um, escape room. So that's our first part. Let's drag this over here now. And I think I'm gonna put it right over that exit sign in the top right hand corner. And again, I wanna make it a little bit smaller so they kind of have to move it around. And then I'm gonna just move my arrow over edit the link. So we already did our digital interactive notebook. Now let's go to our maze. Um, so this one, I would want students to make a copy of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do share. Um, anyone with the, um, anyone on the internet with this link can view. I'm gonna copy that link. But again, I want students to get their own version of that. So I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna write copy and then I'm gonna enter it. And so then it'll make a copy, perfect. So I just always like to double check. And I can apply that. And then look, that works, that's perfect. Um, and then let's put this over. I'm gonna put it just kind of right here on this chair back. Again, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. And now let's go to our task card. So this is where we'll go send. And then once you do send, you can um, press this little link right or the little paper clip, which will be our link. You can shorten the URL too, so it's a lot shorter. And then just copy it. And remember with forms, anytime they have a link, it'll automatic give a, um, automatically give them a new form. So you don't have to worry about changing the link at all. Okay, and then edit link. Okay, and then the last one, I do want to incorporate this um, form as well into the um, escape room, just in case if students see this one first, that's fine, then they kind of know what to do. So that's totally okay. And then eventually they'll need it anyway. So I think if we inc um, incorporate that, let's put that over the dot cam right up front. And then again, remember we press our little pen, put in our new link and then apply. So now that's all that I have. I only am having them do 
um, the notebook, the maze, the task cards, and then um, this last page as well. So now that we have that done, let's go back over here. I'm gonna delete this. And so now we're just back to our slides. So as you can see right here, um, as I'm moving my thing around, I can get the little um, arrows, but you would want your students to be in present mode. So this is what it would look like. So, oh no, you're trapped in the classroom. Move your mouse around to find the, um, around the classroom to find clues. Once you find each answer, um, you'll get the phrase, the word to a phrase. So then, oh look, it changes to a mouse. So as you can see right now, it's an arrow. This changes to the finger that we know we can click on it and it'll take us right there. So then, oh, okay. So say this is the first thing students see. Type your answer. Oh, I haven't done any of that. So let's keep it open is what you would tell your students and then keep going. So, oh look, now they found the door one. So now they can work on the notebook. And then you could say maybe right here, go to slide five and solve that problem. Or if you actually want them to do all of this, they can do that as well. Okay, so then let's go back over here. And I just wanna make sure everything is linked correctly. And so this was the task cards. Great. And so that is something you'll have to tell your students is, each time you find something that um, is linked, you need to make sure you're writing down either the answer or um, kind of what it is or keep them open. So in case if they accidentally do make a little bit of a mistake, they can go back and um, try it again and then get the correct answer so they can eventually put it in that last um, form. And then this was our other one. So would you like to make a copy? Yep. So this is our maze. So then they would do that. And then you can also have students turn all of these individual pieces in, um, right? Because this one, they could probably just see, oh, it says math, or you can um, somehow incorporate one of the answers. So um, in your third problem that you solved, how did you explain it? You can have a, a special piece of paper or special um, Google form that you'd have students fill out explaining their work to, to just make sure they're actually doing all of the work. Um, so that's kind of how I would create um, a virtual escape room. Again, um, with this last part, I would probably have, once they get the correct answer, um, another page where it says, congrats, um, you know, and if we're in person, come let me know that you finished um, the maze and grab a prize, or if it's digital, screenshot this page and upload it to um, Google Classroom or Schoology to let me know that you created the virtual escape room. The thing that I really like about the virtual escape room is if you have a lot of this stuff done already, so say you already have maybe 20 task cards done and you only assign students 10, you can use those other 10 and incorporate all of the kind of leftover pieces into an escape room. And it's, it's a really fun interactive way for students to engage in that content but it's also a great way for you to do more tech for understanding, making sure students are getting a whole big picture, right? So in one activity, we have them do task cards, we have them do a maze, we have them actually solving um, a portion of their notebook. So it's a great way to really encompass a lot of different activities. Um, so let me know if you have any questions at all. I will link this whole um, escape room down below in case if you wanna go back and take a look. Um, so let me know if you have any questions at all, but thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much.